I come about before the Lord at this time. As the word of God is coming forth. Ebed was a believer of the word of God. He preached the word of God. And when you listen to his radio program, he always believed in God. When I normally visit him, it's in the studio. He would say, come here, come here, you can't let me know your a prayer. That's what he did. So this time I picked it here, his pastor, another person, and overseer, Ron Walker, to bring the word, and immediately after that, the eulogy will be read. Bless the name of the Lord. 
but he also loved to smile. Bless the name of Jesus. When I saw the body in the casket, I said to somebody that he has become a big man. Because that little face, innocent face that he has. Bless the name of the Lord. Right now he's smiling at me right now on the, the, the photograph. Amen. You know, I am very happy that um, Councillor came and spoke because I, I wanted to touch that also because we have been to many, many, many places together. And I can remember one day we were driving and he said to us that TNT in it is in his blood. Amen. And he would never marry to a woman who is not a TNT. It's very dark in his yard. Have to be TNT. Amen. So I know that this gentleman was a born TNT. You know, I was at the great side and I overheard a story. Amen about him. Someone want to help him, you know, to elevate in life. Someone of status. Amen. And when they call him into the office, I hope I repeat it, repeat it good. Yeah, man. The first thing everybody told the person was, the man was a labor right, you know? Yes, man, the man was a labor right. And the first thing that everybody told him man was, TNT run in my blood. And everything dropped right there. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. But I don't think we can get another everyday. Bless the name of the Lord. Everybody has been in and out of the hospital many times. And I can remember before they take the foot off, he came back out, amen. And I sent him an art cover book and a pen. And I told him to write his story, amen. Because somebody needs to be helped by his story. The only time that I heard this gentleman being discouraged was the last time that we spoke when he was in the hospital the last time. And because of that, I do not verbalize my thoughts, but I'm still thinking what take place that he's not with us today. I question that. Because no matter how he feels sick, he is the one to encourage you. Bless the name of the Lord. And when I spoke to him that time, he was in pain. But not only his physical body, but mentally I could feel that the man was in pain. And I still question it. You don't have to question with me, but I'm not going to verbalize it. What takes place these few last days? We know the word of God said by their fruits, you shall know them. So by his fruits, we know that he is and should be in a better place. I think I have 10 minutes more. So I'm going to read the scriptures. Amen. And I'm going to ask that we listen to the word. Because I'm not here to preach today. Amen. I know that you're here for a very long time. Amen. So I'm just going to read the word and I want for us to listen the word. Amen. 
But before we read the word, amen, I quote from a book written by Dan Brown, the Da Vinci Code. There are some of us Christians, we will not take time to read or to listen anything that opposes our Christian faith. This gentleman, he wrote, and I make two mention of two things that he wrote in his book. And this book is one of the best-selling books, The Da Vinci Code. In this book, he not only denied the divinity of Jesus, but he attacks the very principles of our Christian faith. Amen. He said, Jesus was not God. Amen. And he tells you where the origin of how it comes about that Jesus becomes God. We are not going to that because we are, amen, slap for time. One of the things he said in the book is, follow me, that Jesus had an illicit, intimate marriage relationship with Mary Magdalene. And out of this relationship, there was a son born. The thought that I want for us to leave here with this afternoon is who will you choose to believe? Amen. Believe is a choice. Amen. It's a choice that we choose to believe what we want to believe. Sometimes the same goal. I have to see for myself before I can believe. Amen. I still, I still, I still think I have five minutes more leave. Here is the word of God. Comes to us from St. Mark chapter 9 verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, it off. It is better for thee to enter into life named than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never, ever, ever be quenched. I also read from St. Luke chapter 16. You see, people are going around as if there is no eternity. Bless the name of the Lord. The very word hell, amen, is a word that causes people to become uncomfortable. Some persons will even say, it's a fitness of our imagination. Some persons will say, hell is here on earth. Some people will say, hell is the grave. I read from St. Luke chapter 16, verses 23 and verse 24. And in hell, and in hell, who Will you choose to believe? Dan Brown, all the many things that have been saying contrary to the will of God and the word of God. These are the words of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. These are his words. It's not the words of Paul. It's not the word of Peter. It's not the word of John. It's not even the word of Jude. The word of the master himself. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. 
and steer Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his prison. And he cried, verse 24, and said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame, brother, sister, friend. This is the word of God. Today we are in time. Death is only an exit out of time and an entrance into eternity. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some persons, they are going on around as if there is no God, there is no devil, there is no heaven, there is no hell. In closing, whose report will you choose to believe? Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Men, women, they make up all kind of story. Amen. To contradict the word of God. But the Lord would have me to tell us today and to remind us and to inform us that there is a hell. Hallelujah. And it's not a place we have Bob Marley is playing music. But the message from hell is in Luke chapter 16. The word of God declares that this place is tormented. Amen. There are all kinds of sayings why people can't go to church. Amen. But I'm not inviting you to church today. I'm only challenging you whose report will you believe. Thank God the lion have believed the report of God. And true is sickness. True is struggles. True is trials. Is faith in God never with us. Bless the name of the Lord. Because he was convinced that there is a heaven. And if there is a heaven, there must be a hell. Somewhere. Choose as a leave from him. Whose report will you believe? Where the tree falls. Where the tree falls. There shall it lie. Until. Until. Until judgment take its course. Christian people, reinforce and fortify your faith in the Almighty God. Let nothing waver you. Bless the name of Jesus. My unsaved friends and backsliders that are around here, I know this is not the word that you may want to hear, but this is the word that God wants for you to learn. Because tomorrow, 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 tomorrow might be too late.
That's the word of the Lord, everybody. If there is a heaven, there must be a hell. If there is no hell, there is no heaven. And I come to Andrew, we don't talk, argue, we don't. Amen. At this time, prepare yourself for the eulogy. We are scaling down nice little people leaving. So I'm going to invite one of his favorite sisters to come and share with us the chronicles of his life. Eulogy for Michael Ricardo Hamilton, 1973 to 2022. When he entered this world, God's handiwork was declared. The waters sang, the hills clapped, all nature shared. Calling a little Hamilton welcome, Michael Ricardo Hamilton, on February 20, 1973 when they resided in the parish of St. Thomas, Jamaica. Michael, who grew up being called Papa, and later Heavy D, and as his popularity grew, Heavy D Lion was born to Poland as a toddler when his parents migrated to this community in 1974. Michael was an active member of the Lancet Primary School, formerly Lancet College. He had a spirit that couldn't be broken. His friends looked up to him and depended on him for lunch, laugh, and love. A love that meant if he needed to pop a fight to defend them, he would. After completing his elementary education, Michael earned a place at Happy Grove High School and was later transferred to Kittery High School, where he completed his secondary education. Not being attached to any profession, Michael headed to Kingston where he worked at Arbor Coast Storage. He soon returned to Portland where he worked as a truck driver at the Cleaser Supermarket. After a few years, he made a livelihood as a self-employed musician. It was clear from an early age that he had a knack for music. Mom told the story many times to the family how he hung the song, All the Songs of Every Blessing before he was able to speak a word. As a result of this love for music, Michael was one of the main musicians at the London NCA, where he was an active member of the Brothers Group. Today he has left the legacy of music at the church and other churches, and in the community, this one and others as well. Even one talent you were given as God's wonderful creation. Use it, don't lose it, bless people of every nation. Michael certainly wasn't selfish with his talent. He taught many youngsters his craft. Some learned willingly, while others were forced into learning. This talent also brought him to Happy Grove High School, where he taught music for a year. He was later employed by Star of the Fire as the host of the popular gospel segment, Thought and Praise, aired on Sundays. The airwaves echoed. Roll call, brother, sister, roll call. Countless number of people will miss his revival spirit, whether from radio, church, or stage show. Certainly, Kevin Squire has gained an entertainer. Man blooms and flourishes, but for a time, from earth he came, to the earth he shall return as his bell chimes. Michael Tell started a downward spiral when an unfortunate incident occurred in 2013. His right leg was injured in a fall on the main road at Lydar. The leg was subsequently amputated, but his health was never the same. This even after sorting a prosthetic leg through the assistance of his family and supporters on January 3. The health issue was further compounded by diabetes. In mid-January, he complained about not feeling well. He persevered and attended a funeral service. I said to him, why are you going to eat a walk a man? And that should tell you what that means. However, it has deteriorated thereafter. With many trips back and forth from hospitals through the years, it was unexpected that 
that when he was admitted on January 27 of this year in Atlanta Bay, that the journey would come to an end on February 3. We do not mourn as others, as those without hope do. Instead, we celebrate his life, and you should too. Let's to celebrate his life our mother Lolita, children, Tashawn and Tina, two grandchildren, brothers, Anthony and Kirk, both are his blood brothers. Also want to mention Reverend Owen Walker and Elder Samuel Robinson. I, I, I was, I had the privilege of hearing about them so much, even more than Kirk and Tony. His sisters, Petrina and Patricia, nephews, nieces, and a host of brethren, relatives, friends, fans, colleagues, students, all pain and discomfort will one day see. His have so been done. May he sleep in peace. All right, a silly in a hit, silly in here, Neymar. You're going to be closing off for us. And after that, we will have the prayer for the family. So, silly will be giving us selection and then.
people be having prayer for the family. And this will be done by another person I know, Reverend Samuel Robinson. Will the circle be unbroken? Let us pray. Ye that liveth forever and ever, whose dwelling place is in the heavens of heaven, whose footstool is the earth. Great is thy name, O God, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for our situation, the joy of the old earth is Mount Zion and the side of the north, the city of the great king. We come today, Almighty God, because you have called over one of your own servants who have served you well, who have served humanity. We miss him, the God you know best. We listen to his pain and his suffering. Today is free. We pray today, Father God, for his family, those who are still alive. We ask, Almighty God, that you give them the strength and the courage and the bravery to continue not only to live, but to impact many lives, just as Michael did. There are so many people that need the gospel. And as a family that preach the word, as a family that live for you, we pray, Almighty God, that they will continue to touch and impact lives. We pray, Father God, for their strength. We pray for renewed energy as they go from day to day. We pray also, Almighty God, that you will guide them not only in this life, but after this life, then Christ, as he descend in the clouds, and the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those who are alive shall be changed, that they too will be in that great number. Father God, hallelujah. We look to you now, because not only the family, O oh God, but there are others that are around that have not known you as Lord and Savior, as your servant today. I pray that somebody will realize uh, that time is short. We don't have much long here. Somebody's going to make a mistake uh, with an atomic bomb or something. But God, uh, in you, we have rest. Uh, we have peace. Uh, we have security. We know, God, that you are able, ever since the devil came and deceived the woman, and I've been making a work in the world with your people. One of these days, God, we know that you're going to dispossess him. And you're going to repossess the earth. And all mankind will live as it was in the Garden of Eden. I pray that this family, oh God, in spite of all the trials and the tests and the tribulation, they will keep holding on to your unchanging hand. That the Holy Spirit will continue to comfort and guide them 
and to lead them in the path of righteousness, to lead them in the path where their lives get shine. As Matthew said, uh, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and be led to glorify the Father. We pray that their lives will give glory to you as they go from day to day. Let your blessings be upon them. Let your light so shine in and around them that as they go from day to day, somebody will learn from them that God is good. Bless us today, Father God. Bless this family. Preserve them and cause them, Heavenly Father, to experience that joy of salvation that continues to flow from the fountain of living water. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And we just bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to go to the final resting place. Uh, we're going to sing the recessional game, Come Heal That Love the Lord. The family, please make note that the family is asking you to join them at the New Testament Assembly Monsters for refreshment immediately after the interment. At the singing of the third stanza, I'm going to ask the Palmeiras to come as we transport the earth remains of Michael to the final resting place. Come here, the love the Lord, and let the joys be known. Join in a song with me